Righto, so we've been in our little gallivanting drive around the countryside. Um, went and got our rings, so we now have our rings. So we can continue with this motor, finally. It is a lot later than we wanted to be starting on doing this motor today. Um, it's at time two o'clock in the afternoon, so. Yeah, it's getting getting on, but anyway, you uh, you get that. Not much we can do about it. So we need to gap up these rings and then we'll start ready for start actually final assembly, which is going to be awesome. Um, tonight, it looks like today, touch wood, um, is going to be another still afternoon so hopefully it's still going to be a nice nice night to be doing a final assembly of a of an engine so anyway we're going to have a lot of ring filing on our hands because the only size we could get was 10 thou over which is a lot bigger than we wanted which means we're going to have a lot of filing to do but um at least they're going to be file fit to the right um gap there's the, the last rings the gap was just way too big so took a big wags to go get all this stuff as well and uh yeah having music is very cool and good it makes the old diff line a lot easier to deal with, which is nice because it's getting pretty out of hand. Took a big wags to go get all this stuff as well, and uh, yeah, having music is very cool and good. <laughs> it makes the old diff line a lot easier to deal with, which is nice because it's getting pretty out of hand. So this here is our solution for how much we're gonna have to file these rings. Uh, we've taken the little handle off the ring file tool, put the drill on, clamped it to the table here so that we can really... Give that a go. Oh, it's gotta go that way. Oh yeah, this is gonna work. That's I like this. Ooh, I like that's this. too fast. <laughs> Back to one. Yeah, oh, that's yeah. good. That's That'll gonna work. be much better than doing all these by hand because there's gonna be so much filing to be done. So As I was saying, I'm pretty sure I explained this in the last video um, when we went to do ring gap, but it didn't work. But yeah, ring gap. Um, yeah, put the ring in the bore, check it with feeler gauge, file if you need, keep filing, checking, filing, checking until you get your gap right. So for this particular motor, we're going to go for a ring gap of 18 thou on the top ring. Um, that is a little bit on the larger side for aspirated motor, but um, the customer is thinking still that at some point he will want to boost this motor, potentially. So um, it's, it's tight enough that it's still going to be fine in A, but it's just a little bit on the, on the bigger side. So when it comes time for him to boost it, he shouldn't have to worry about anything. He should be able to just pump mild boost into this motor. And not have a queer like not have a climb at all so yeah, they're pretty much just butted up solid About 12. About 12. About 12. Sneaking up on her, getting Sneaking there. Sneaking up on her, just creeping. Just bloody, just creeping. in there nice and loose. 14. Tight on 16. So just a touch more. A little more. bit more. Just a little more. Thing 
too is that yeah when you go to your second ring that's not molly yeah you go to do the first one and it just it's eats just through it and yeah, oh. shaves it all off <laughs> oh no yeah so i reckon we'll just we'll go through do all the top rings go through do all the bottom rings you get in a bit of a rhythm you sort of know once you do this first one you sort of know how much know, yeah, you know what it takes yeah. That's it, yeah. You know how much you got to take off, so. Just, just not quite 18. We'll literally just give that the tiniest little, little blip. Up. Yeah. on 18. Maybe just a little more. A little more? Yeah, I'd rather go on just slightly on the high side of 18. for me 18 yep so there you go guys that's one ring uh, i'm not going to bother filming this whole process because it'll again it's one of those things like bearings it'll just take forever um we've just got to do that 15 <laughs> more times yeah we've just got to do that for all the top rings then we've got to do the second rings. second rings will go just slightly bigger than the top probably to 20 thou. um and yeah it's a long tedious process made a lot better by our little drill um little inventive what do you call it I don't even know, the, the words slip my tongue. Ingenuity? Yeah, innovative. <laughs> <laughs> so, all, all the same. The, anyway, the above. that's, that's going to help us a lot with this whole process. It's going to take us not as long as we have expected, but we still have a lot of ring gaps to do. So, anyway, we'll check back in when they're all done. Oh, no, rings are gapped after a couple of hours. Long job, but rings are all gapped with their associated pistons ready to go. So, we are at the point we are going to our final clean of the block, final clean up of the bores and start on our final assembly now. All right, so most of this assembly, I'm just going to time lapse because it is stuff we've always well, been through before. It's, uh, it's, it's pretty straightforward, the assembly. It's just assembling new hardware, car, the correct torque settings, that sort of thing. Um, I will stop and film things like uh, the end float and that sort of stuff, stuff I'm gonna record as well. Um, but yeah, most of it's just going to be time lapse so that we can get in and get it done. And uh, if you want to know more about it, I'll drop a link in the corner or in the description of uh, when we went through it a bit more when we did the uh, engine for the cruiser. So if you want to know more about it, you can go there and have a look, but it's all pretty straightforward.
Righty guys, the crank's in. Got the end float set. We ended up actually putting the gauge on the on the front of the motor instead of where it was on the back um, to get a better reading of the end float. But anyway, we've got the end float set to four hour, which is pretty good, pretty bang on. That's that's good. So that's crank installed. So now it's time to do our final clean of these bores, assemble our pistons, put our rings on our pistons, clean up the rings because they've been filed. Uh, so they need a good clean up. Uh, yeah, so do our final clean of this stuff and get it together, and then it's time to start putting that into the motor. So. Uh, once again, it's another thing we've covered quite often, or quite a few times. Just use a ring compressor and a bit of oil. Get them down with a little handle of a hammer and uh, get them all nice and in there, nice and good. Righto, one rotating assembly together. Um, yeah. Looking good, turns over real nice. Everything's looking great so far, so just gonna take a bit of a break, have some wilder, wilder, and uh, yeah, get back into it in a minute. Rightio, guys, we are back. Uh, had to go across the road to see a man about a dog. Um, might have some more R31 parts up for sale pretty soon, so uh, we'll see how that goes. Um, again, it's Sort of a later issue, we've got to get this thing done for now before you start worrying about that. So, uh, rotating assembly bottom enders together. So, now it's time to put the cam in and um, look at doing the, the timing on the cam and dialing the cam in. And then from there, it's just a matter of building up from there lifters, push rods, heads, gaskets, all that sort of stuff. So, uh, hopefully, tonight have this motor pretty much uh, assembled, ready to go. And then tomorrow, we'll work on trying to get it in the bloody hole and get it nick going. So what we're going to do is hit up our tuner to get a tune of him to suit uh, a cam in similar specs to the one we're using just to sort of get it running so we can run it in, run it up and down the road, that sort of stuff and um, customer can you know then drive it around, do what he's got to do uh, until such a time that he feels like he wants to actually get it properly dyno tuned again. Uh, so it won't be at its full potential with just a, a, a thrown on tune on it but it'll uh, get it all working allow us to bed in the cam. It's gonna be a brand new clutch, brand new cam, um, brand new rings. So good idea just to sort of bed all that stuff in a little bit before it hits the dyno anyway. We've got our timing gear, timing set, which you saw Rex modify in the last video. Modified the front plate to suit the new timing kit or the new cam. Yeah, timing set. Do we want to uh, disclose the cam specs to everyone? Or? No, it's top secret. Top secret cam tech cam off the shelf cam. No, it's just a um, just a little partner. Yeah, so 224, 228 on a 112 lobe, around 580, 600 lift. Just a nice little, um, nice little sort of. It should have a little bit of bump to it, but it'll still be very streetable. So nice the customer uses this car a lot for his work. He actually loads it up quite a bit. Um, does a lot of driving around with heavy loads in the tray. So we wanted to go for a cam that was nice and lumpy, um, like sounded the part, a little bit of go, good mid-range, but we, we needed it to be have like good street manners and be easy to drive off idle because he does often load it up quite a bit. So uh, we ended up with this cam choice. We think it's gonna be perfect, perfect balance of just a little bit of a little bit of bump, but still very nice street manners. And um, you know, down down the road if he ever decides he wants to boost it, it's still gonna be okay in there as well. So Nice Should be a really nice little punchy mid-range motor when it's all finished. Yeah, that's the cam card. So that's all the specs. Beautiful. Stick up for the for our rock cap. 
Right, I guess I don't know if I went through it with you as well, but we do also have uh, new Johnson high lift lifters. So these are much better than the stock items. Uh, apparently GM actually no longer make LS7 lifters straight up. That's what we normally would use. We normally just chuck LS7 lifters in these LSs, but uh, yeah, apparently you can't get brand new GM LS7 lifters anymore. So the next best thing is gonna be Johnson high lift, which is uh, what we've got here. We've got our brand new Mellings 18% high volume oil pump. Uh, again, it's looking at that avenue of uh, if, if the customer does end up wanting to go boost, it's gonna give plenty of oil for uh, a boosted setup and, and a turbo feed as well. So. Uh, should have really good oil pressure. Everything out this motor should be really, really perfect for, for what the customer is looking for now and in future. We've also got ARP head bolts. Um, again, that little bit of boost. Have those good head bolts for that mild boost setup. And uh, we do have as well, uh, brand new GM um, head gaskets as well. So. so we use the GM head gaskets. Uh, it's the same ones we use in the Cruiser. They're a really good gasket. And, um, same, same as like Toyota or the Jays and stuff like that. For, um, you know, Toyota MLS head gaskets are some of the best you can get. So same with GM MLS head gaskets, they're pretty good. So it'll all go together. Be a really nice little tough motor. Got new lifter buckets, um, same old push rods. And as you've seen, the heads is all new gear as well. So that pretty much concludes all of the new parts. Just get them in. Just gotta get them all in, get it together. Right, as the cam's in the motor, um, so now we're just going to soak all these new lifters in oil, get them nice and soaked up, uh, and then they can go in. It's just so they don't, just so they don't start dry. You know, like all of your your needle rollers and and stuff in the trunnion, and just the internal body of the lifters at least got something in it. Yep, some sort of lubrication. Um, so soak them, and then it's pretty much time to start looking at getting them in and getting their heads on and uh, start getting that together. So it is moving along. Righto, so new lifters are in. We've got brand, brand new lifter buckets. Uh, it's one of those things on LSs because they are plastic. You're dealing with a stock LS lifter bucket is 20 year old plastic. It is quite uh, gross in the, <laughs> in the, the sense of things. So. We like to put brand new lifter buckets in them just because it's, you know, it is a plastic part inside a motor. I'd rather not have a, you know, a, a fresh motor with a 20 year old lifter bucket in it. So it's all new lifter buckets. So now it's time to clean up these surfaces, ready to accept their head gaskets and get the heads on. Hello right, guys, so we've got our heads and our rockers and push rods and everything installed. Uh, now you would have seen the process of us tightening down the rocker arms. Uh, what you want to do is make sure when you're tightening down your rockers they're not loaded up on the springs because that's going to fight you on your torque setting which is going to give you a uneven, uh, not really reliable 
uh, torque setting when you're, when you're doing them up. So you wanna make sure you, what we did was just follow around the uh, firing order and make sure that we got each uh, cylinder when it wasn't loaded up on the spring to make sure you can tighten them down and they are actually properly tight because they're not loaded up on the spring. So we're up to the point now where it's ready to put our oil pump on. Now, obviously with oil pumps, you don't go just smashing them on because there is potential to have them offset off the, uh, the center of the crank. So what you need to do is shim up the gears on the inside to make sure that the pump housing is centered around the crank. We have gone through this before as again, it's, it's, we did go through this quite in depth when we built the motor for the cruiser. So we have been through it. Um, so yeah, you wanna make sure you shim up the gears inside the pump to make sure the pump housing is centered around the crank snout. Otherwise your potential will, like you will ride the gear on one side, which will prematurely wear things. It won't, just, do, it won't do nice stuff. Just to be clear, it's shim it to center it, not like permanent shims installed. It's oh, no, 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 yeah. You just shim it to make sure that when you install the housing, it is centered around the crank. Yeah. Uh, then, you, then you take the shims out and put the gears back in without the shims, and it's good to go. But uh, this fire, wherever it is, is, it must be pretty close because this smoke is getting crazy. Even inside the shed here, I don't know if you can see that on camera, but it's, uh, it's getting real smoky even inside the shed. It's pretty wild, so. It mustn't be very far away. Um, yeah, we were actually across the road. Our mate across the road is a volunteer firefighter, so we're across there looking at a few things, talking to him to about a few cars that he's got over there, and he actually got called to this fire. So it mustn't be very far away, which is worrying. But uh, anyway, we'll uh, we'll keep trucking along. Obviously, the plan is to still try and get this motor together, ready to go in for tomorrow. So we'll keep going. What a nice looking set of pump general pumpiness oh, looks pretty good doesn't look too bad so you can see what we've done here is uh, we've shimmed up the inside gear with the outside gear on the pump housing to ensure that the pump housing is actually centered around the crank so these are two thousand shims so we've got oh, Shims on the outer gear to the housing, plus shims on the inner gear to the crank. And uh, when you install all them and then tighten the pump housing down, you're just ensuring that the housing is actually centered around the crank. Yeah, so just, just a shout out, yeah, Pete, we used actual shims this time instead of L for it. If you go back and watch when we did the cruiser, we didn't have 2,000 shims, so what, ended up doing, well, what Rex ended up doing was folding over L foil until you got a 2,000 shim out of L foil. So go and watch that if you like, it's, it's quite entertaining, but anyway. Some real bush mechanic shit. <laughs> But it got it done, and it got it done, so.
All right, guys, massive night, but it's together. It is dressed together. Ready to go back in the hole as we... It is midnight on Friday night. Yeah, it is a midnight Friday night. As we estimated though, Friday night we wanted... It... No, it's Saturday night. It's midnight Saturday night. Sorry, it is Saturday night. Yeah. Shit. But <laughs> as, as we decided, we, we wanted it ready to go back in the hole Saturday night so that Sunday we could work on getting it in the hole and getting it running. And that's exactly where we got to. So if we didn't stop until we got it there. We haven't eaten yet. We haven't had any dinner. We are hungry. Um, it's been a long night, but we got it there. So... Now it is dressed, pretty much ready to go back in the hole. Uh, so that's going to be tomorrow is going to be getting this sucker back into where it belongs, into its home. And uh, then getting it running and stuff. So solid effort, solid night. It's still very smoky. It's sort of, it, it is starting to lift, I suppose, a bit now. It's, it's finally started to stop not getting any worse now. <laughs> Which has been a worry because for for ages it's just been getting worse the smoke. But anyway, uh, anyway, so the LS is ready to go back in the hole. So that's all good. Uh, pretty much the last thing to do is to chuck some plugs in it and to put the plug leads back on. And uh, then tomorrow we've got to work on flywheel clutch and then getting it back in the hole, obviously. So uh, that's going to be a tomorrow job. We are wrecked for tonight, so that's going to be it for tonight and uh, it for this video. So. Thanks for watching, as always, hope you enjoyed, hope you learnt something new. Uh, it's probably going to be a pretty long video, it's been a pretty long day, so sorry for that, but uh, I'm just doing this daily video thing, so see how it goes. So. Yeah, thanks as always guys, like, comment, subscribe, um, don't forget to turn on the bell, little bell to make sure you don't forget or you don't miss out on whenever we upload, and uh, we'll see you on the next one, which will be getting this motor back in this hole. So, see you on that one, and yeah, it's been awesome, catch up. See ya, bye. See ya, later. See you guys, bye. Yep, see ya.